What is up everybody, it's Stas here and in today's video we're going to be talking about the top couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade here heading into the second week of October in 2019. I also want to break down with you guys the stock market futures, the NASDAQ, the S&P and the Dow as well as gold, natural gas and crude oil so we can get an understanding of what the futures are looking like right now so we can plan our week of trading accordingly. So if you find value in this video if you enjoy the video at any moment in time feel free to go down below and hit that like button i would really appreciate it and consider subscribing if you do want to see further content about the stock market trading and investing and join our free discord group chat and our free facebook group all of those are linked down below in the description box so let's start it off very quickly taking a look at the broad markets here the spx the s p 500 the 500 largest publicly traded u.s companies before we do take a look at the futures. So this past Friday, guys, it was a great performance in terms of a dollar amount and a percentage in the stock market. The S&P was up 41 points, up 1.42%. We got a jobs report that I'm going to pull up right now for you guys on my phone that we got about 136,000 jobs added and a record low unemployment of 3.5%, which is actually a 50-year low. So that is some news that we did get Friday, whether or not that's a catalyst that's up for you to decide, but the markets were up 41 points in terms of the S&P, the NASDAQ and the Dow did very well as well. You guys can see here the Dow is up 372 points, the NASDAQ if we look at NDX very quickly up around 1.5%, so very strong day this past Friday and this Thursday was also a good day uh, this past Thursday if we go to the five day five minute you can see we bottomed out at 2855 then actually went all the way up to 2910 on Thursday so with these two green days in a row is this market going to continue to go up let's take a look at some of these futures to see how the market's looking right now the S&P is currently down $11 down almost 0.4 percent right now so this is telling me that we're gapping down we may be pulling down now a bit after those two massive green days that we did have these past two days, right? If we go to the NASDAQ, or, or rather the Dow Jones here, we're down 96 points, down 0.36%. The NQ is down about 0.4% here, down about 30 points. And it does seem like we are gapping down, we are pulling down here, especially since this 50 SMA is acting as a resistance, so we may be pulling back down to this 180 SMA support here on the NQ, which is on the 5-day, five 5-minute, five and I'm sure it's the similar charts, uh, technicals on the S&P. You guys can see we may be pulling down. Actually, no, that's not the ES. This is the ES here. You guys can see we may be pulling down to this 180 SMA here on this pull down, especially since we are getting rejected by that 50 SMA. So if we're looking overall on the SPX here, guys, on the 184 hour chart, sure, we had two huge green days, right? We had two huge green days. The trend seems like it's holding itself in terms of that trend that I just drew, right? Higher low here. But overall, the market is still technically downtrending at the same time, right? We're trending below moving average resistance levels, both the 180 and this 50 SMA. If we zoom in a bit on this 20-day, one hour, we're technically still at a lower high right here. And we're also under the overall 180 SMA on the 20-day, one hour chart as well, right? So I think these past two days, they were simply a breeze either for the market, right? We got the manufacturing data that was very weak, that is signaling a slowing economy and a slowing global economy, and that absolutely rocked the stock market, right? If we go to the five-day, five-minute, you guys can see we dropped from 29.92 all the way down to about 28.55 in the matter of 48 to about 64 hours, roughly that time period across these three days, and this was due to that manufacturing data, right? And this can simply be a breather this pop up here before we continue the downtrend and overall the uh, resistance level that I'm watching on the SPX is going to be 2950 right because if we look at the macro aspect here on the four hour chart on the SPX 
You know, if we get rejected by this level at 29.50, which we got rejected at back in the beginning of May, this could trigger a sell-off that might get us back down to 29.20, maybe back down to 28.80, where we held just a couple of days ago, and maybe even lower from there, right? And that could be the completion of that right shoulder in the overall head and shoulder pattern that I'm seeing here on the SPX. So that's kind of the market breakdown right now. So some levels that I'm looking at, some really info about the futures in general. So let's hop now very quickly and talk about what are some of these stocks that I'm looking to trade this week. The first one is going to be Google, right? Google is one that if these markets do end up rebounding here, let's say they see a bit of a pullback, they end up rebounding instead of selling off, right? Let's say they rebound, right? Google at this point could be an interesting dip buy right? We got a low at about 1025 back in the beginning of June. We rallied all the way up to 1250, which is known to be a rough area of resistance, right? From back in the middle towards the end of July and then back in the mo uh, March to April months, right? That was a general area of resistance. We pulled down from there and you guys can see, although we did break the 180 SMA support, we're still holding this overall trend that is an uptrend, right? At a higher low from the previous and from the previous and from the previous, right? And the fact that we broke this 180 SMA of resistance here on the four hour chart and we're running up here to test the 50 SMA, this can be a decent spot where if we end up breaking, this could be an entry point for a breakout on Google that can get us back up to that 1250 level, which is known to be a resistance. And if we did end up getting in right around where Google is right now, let's say, or maybe we waited for a pullback, we we have about a 2.53 to 3.5 percent of profit in terms of how much money we can make on Google stock. So I like it, but again, it's heavily reliant on the market, right? If these markets continue red like they are here, you know, that's most likely going to drag down Google and then we'll hop into some of these inverse, not really inverse ETF, these market leverage ETFs that go up whenever the NASDAQ is going down. Because if Google and tech goes down, let's say if these markets crash, the NASDAQ is going to go down as well, which pops up SQQQ, which is another one that I like trading, right? Which is not a stock. It's an ETF, again, that trades on the NASDAQ. It goes up three times what the NASDAQ is going down. So let's say the NASDAQ, Google tech gets crushed, right? It goes down 2% whatever it may be, SQQQ is going to go up 6% because, again, it goes up three times what the NASDAQ is going down. So SQQQ is one that I am watching if that whole Google and the whole market thesis of going up doesn't happen, right? The next stock that I'm looking at is J&J, and I did talk about this one in my video on Friday, but I figured, hey, if you didn't catch that video on Friday... I'll mention it here so you get the analysis. So J&J &J is one of those value stocks that hit, that has been getting crushed because of some legal stuff, right? We all know what's been going on, or most of us has, uh, knows what's been going on in terms of J&J. &J. That's been affecting the stock, right? But a lot of people look at this, and a lot of other stocks like McDonald's, Pepsi, Procter & Gamble, they look at these stocks as quote-unquote safe havens, right? Although not any stock in the stock market is 100% safe. No stock is 100% safe. But a lot of people look at Johnson & Johnson to be safer than, let's say, Facebook, for example, or a company that's growing a lot faster than Johnson & Johnson is, right? So that is why you're seeing some of these stocks hold up a lot better than other stocks that are getting crushed in a certain time period, like a lot of growth stocks do when the economy is slowing down, when a lot of red flags are popping out like they are right now. So you can see J&J &J on a technical basis. We found a bottom at around 127, 130-ish. If we zoom out a bit to the one year, one day, you'll be able to see that, right? We bottomed out here back in the beginning of this year and towards the end of 2018. We ran up all the way to 140, pulled down. Again, we retested and now we're looking to pop, right? If we zoom in back to that four hour chart, you guys can see we also broke a very critical resistance at 130 to about 131. Actually, 
actually more 131 to 132 and now it seems like we're testing this level of resistance at around 134 dollars and in my opinion guys if we do break this is going to be a buy signal right we can either day trade it from here up to 135.50 which would be around i'd say one to two percent right around 1.3 percent or we could swing trade it right if you're looking to hold this about a couple of weeks you know, you could swing trade it if the technicals do follow and the technicals do look good up to this level at 140, which would be around a four to five percent margin of profit. But since the RSI is a bit overbought here and earnings are coming up, which could shake the company up a bit, but let's say earnings pass, nothing happens. Let's say we pull down to 132 right around here and we hold that as a new support. This could also be an entry point. So I'm looking at that, but be careful guys. Earnings are coming up here on the 15th, which is nine days away from today when I'm recording this video. That could definitely rock J&J to either direction. Just be careful, right? PG is the next one. This is very simple. We're pulling down, we're testing the 180 SMA, we're holding it, and it's been a level of support over the past couple of months and this is one that I actually added some money in on Friday more towards the end of the day and I'm holding this as a swing trade right this is another one of those value stocks that people put money in when growth is slowing down when the economy is getting rocky when the stock market is getting rocky right there's cycles in the market you'll learn this as you're in it for a longer period of time as you see money shift from sector to sector company to company and so on right this is basic, right? You're seeing the pullback 125 down to 120, right? That is a nice $5 pullback that opens up around 4%. We got the pull down. We got the pop. We're breaking above moving average resistances. We already broke ab above the 50 SMA and the EMA. Now I'm looking to see either a pull down retest on that 50 SMA for a potential continuation or a straight up continuation from where we are right now. So I do see potential. This one can go to a high high which if it does from where we are right now up to 126 this could be around a two to three percent margin of profit so pg i'm liking it and some stocks that have been flying under the radar have been on my mind recently guys and if you look here on the left you can see the weed stock watch list i got tilray i got nx which i honestly forget which one this is namaste it's a penny stock. I got NBEV, I got Crime, and I got CGC, right? And I got some of these. This must, this is probably Afria and then Aurora, right? But the two ones that I'm looking at in particular are Cron and CGC. If we pull up these three-year charts on these marijuana stocks, they both have two things in common. They're both coming at levels. They're coming up to levels. That, that were support levels a couple of years ago, right? CGC here in particular, it's coming up to that 180 SMA here on the three-year, one-week chart. It's also coming up to that level where back in 2017, heading into 2018, right around $20 to $22, we held that and we ran all the way up to $60. And with the retracement that we've seen in CGC, guys, all the way down to where it is right now, I think it's worth watching, right? Because if we end up consolidating here and maybe running back up this could be a play that trades just strictly off technicals right because if marijuana gets hot CGC gets hot. If something big happens, this can easily fly up here. Um, the technicals could point to a buy, and we could be running up back to $30, $40, $50 in no time, right? If we look at Cron, you can see, you know, we're holding an old resistance now as a new support. We're right around that level at about $8.59 bucks that we were at back in 2017, 2018. So I think it's worth watching here to see, you know, if we hold, hey, we might rally back up to $12, $13, which really happened a couple of years ago when we broke eight nine bucks we ran up to 13 bucks in a couple of months as you guys can see right so crime you know cgc if these continue to break down for all we know they definitely could um you know, if that happens, we may be going back to lower prices. You know, Cron, five bucks is in the picture here. If we do break down, that's the next support, major support that I'm seeing. Roughly seven bucks is the next one, honestly. Then after that's about five bucks. You know, CGC 
If we do break down, we may be going down to 15, 16, 17 bucks. That's an area that I'm seeing. So just watch these two guys. Although the technicals, they're not looking great. These can catch on fire, especially if some good catalysts come out regarding them. So Roku, let's take a look at this one. A lot of people talk about this stock in our community, guys. And again, if you guys have not joined our Discord group chat, it's 100% free of charge. We have over 800 people in there. That's linked up down below as well as the Facebook group. Both, again, are 100% free of charge. But anyway, Roku, this one is holding 100 bucks. We talked about this last week. This is a very good sign, right? Because this was a level of support back in the beginning of August. Also back in the middle towards the beginning of June as well, right? And last time we got to this level, we held it. We rallied all the way from 100 to, yes, 176 bucks. That's almost a double up in the matter of a month and a half. That's absolutely insane. I was about to say in craze. It's crazy and insane in terms of Roku, guys. And the fact that we are playing around with this 50 SMA right now on the four hour chart, I'm thinking if we break this, guys, and especially if we break above 108 again, we'll fill the gap up to 112. No problem, right? That's a $4 gap fill. And if we break that, we could be running all the way back up to, let's say, I'm seeing a price here at around 128, 130 being the ceiling right now now on Roku, right? And from 110 to 130, guys, that's doable, and that's around a 15% margin of profit. So that's putting Roku out of the stocks I talked about today as being the best stock, and honestly, in terms of risk, not really risk, but in terms of reward, this one's looking very, very good, and it might top the list, top the list of the stocks that I talked about today. So before I do end off this video, guys, let's take a look at NG very quickly, because I know a lot of you guys love talking talking about it. It's down about 2% right now, guys. Oh my goodness. Down about 4 cents. And it seems like we are getting rejected by that 50 SMA. Not too good of a sign here for the bulls because you guys can see last time we got rejected by that 50 SMA, we dumped down even further. So this is not good. We should have broken out of here if you're on the bull side. But the fact that we are getting rejected, it seems like we are going to test 230 right now, which is a critical support. And if we break this, guys, which would be very bad for the Bulls, great for the Bears, we may be going down to $2.25. That's the next support level, and below that, it's going to be 220. So D gas guys is looking attractive now, and the trigger to buy D gas, in my opinion, is going to be when and if natural gas does break below 230. Because at that point, again, we may fill down to 225 or down to 220. And when that happens, for those of you guys that don't know, I always forget that I get new viewers on the channel every single day. Let me explain, right? D gas is an ETF that goes up whenever natural gas is going down. It's that simple, right? It goes up three times what natural gas is going down. So let's say natural gas dumps 2%, degas is going to be up 6%, right? So this one's holding the 50 SMA nicely. Again, if we get that dump on NG, this one can pop. It's going to look nice. But let's say on the flip side, NG holds 230. You know, we could play the inverse to degas, which is UGAS, and maybe play it from 230 up to, let's say, 238, which is the resistance that we got hit at under this 50 SMA. And you guys, again, this is the inverse to DGAS. It goes up whenever natural gas is going up, right, at a 3x rate. So gold right now, let's take a look at what that's looking like very quickly. Gold, not much, not much right now. It's not really doing much. Up 20 cents, up 0.01%, really no movement. We're trending under the 180 SMA here, lower high. So watch this, guys. You know, if we do break out of this 180 SMA and we go to test 1540, which is one of the highs from a couple of weeks ago, that's going to be good for the bulls, right? JNUG could be a play there, but let's say we dump here, get rejected, and start our way to that lower low and we ultimately break 1495 which is a support that's not going to be good that's obviously going to be bad for the bulls good for the bears and JDST might be a good play there. So last one, guys, before we do wrap it up, don't want to make this video too long, is crude oil. Crude oil right now, not much, down 10 cents, down about 0.13%. 
Good sign here, though, for you UWT um, traders out there. UWT goes up whenever crude oil is going up. This could be setting up right now for UWT, guys, because take a look. We're holding 52 bucks. That was a support back in June and July, actually mostly in the middle of June. It was a support again in the middle towards the beginning of August, right? And now we're holding it again. We're seeing some movement above the EMA here, which is attractive. Let's see if we start to make that break up to that 50 SMA. If that happens, guys, this is going to be what we need to trade. It's going to be UWT. And honestly, guys, at this point, this is looking attractive. It's probably the top one on my list now, um, as well as Roku, right? Those two are the, the best in terms of a reward percentage, right? This is up in the 10, 15, 20% potential here if crude oil does pop, right? But if crude oil takes a turn to the downside, that's going to be bad for crude oil in terms of the, uh, the bull side. And we'll be able to trade DWT, which goes up whenever crude oil is selling off. So I'm going to end off the video here, guys. If you did enjoy it, feel free to go down below hit that like button consider subscribing if you do want to see further content involving the stock market trading and investing and don't forget join our discord group chat guys i promise you you'll find a ton of value in there as well as our facebook group follow me on instagram at stasurfest i'm going to be doing a giveaway here very soon in the next couple of weeks so you want to follow me on instagram so you can get some details on that giveaway so i'll catch you all in the next video thanks again for watching Peace out.